his presence and I want to see that for us to understand that God has given us everything that we need there are some things that sometimes we have to be reminded of and God will make a shift in your life as he would always make a shift in his church. We must not become complacent. God calls us to be part of a community of believers. Then we must obey what the Lord says to us. We must obey. We must obey what the word says. We must obey what the Lord says. We are not meant to walk in the kind of defeat that we're walking in. You see, for 400 years, there was no prophecy. There was no prophet. And then Jesus was born on this earth. But when he was among the people, they were like sheep without a shepherd. They had been suffering, struggling. There had been no word for, for about 400 years, there was no word from him. Can you understand, being on this earth, there's no word. You have the, the Hebrew scriptures, you have the Old Testament. But there is no, nothing, no, no, no newness, no refreshing. There's disease, there's bondage. There's, and there were a lot of people like that. When, that's why when Jesus, and he walked on the earth... Many of them followed him because it was like, okay, this is new. It, it, there's something about him. There's something about what he's offering that I've been missing in my spirit and I didn't realize that I was missing it. So they would follow him. I need us to know that, that Christianity is not, is not a credential. It's a way of life. It's a... It's a, a burning desire to, to follow the master regardless of what happens to us. It's, it's not I'm a Christian and I do what I want. I'm a Christian. No, that's religion. That's churchianity. When Jesus came, religion had set in. Churchianity had set in. The, the, the Pharisees were burdening the people more than being there to help them to, to apply the scripture. They were applying heavy weights to the people. So they were in bondage and, and going into more bondage. And today God is saying to us, he calls us to understand a, a verse that I'm always, always saying that we need to apply even before we receive the healing and deliverance that we want, we must want the deliverer. We must understand this is the call in Obadiah 1.17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. There shall be deliverance. Notice the order. Deliverance, holiness, possessing your possessions. It's not deliverance because, well, you know, a thing kind of affecting me and I need breakthrough. It's because... To walk in holiness, you must receive deliverance because there's, there's bondage there that needs to break. There's demons that have started affecting our minds, our soul, not our spirit. In our spirit, that's where the Holy Spirit lives. But there are other areas. There are other areas of us where there's bondage and there's a deep cry in the heart of God that today, today, his church possess their possessions because he sent his greatest possession to the earth to be the sacrifice that we will possess our possessions so it's not okay even just to be here because we want a little experience or we need this or we need that we don't want yesterday's oil we don't want to walk like yesterday we want the power and authority to give glory to God the blood that was shed for us we want to apply it so that we will possess our possessions because we are called to occupy until he returns and we must occupy with power and with might until he returns 
Otherwise, it's just another get together in his presence. It's just another, okay, I'm coming to pray for myself. There's nothing wrong with that. But there has to be more. There has to be more. There has to be more that we desire in our heart. And there has to be more than just coming once again into his presence. I, I, I need us to, 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 to know that the, the, the devil is supposed to be fearing the Christ in us. There is no way that we are to be afraid of what the children of darkness could do to us. Then we have become pawns in Satan's hand, calling ourselves Christian. And it's because we need to understand it starts with the reality starts with us being delivered of the things that is keeping us back from walking in power and authority. Because... For believers to possess their possessions, holiness and deliverance must be brought together. They must be married. If you're here today and you're thinking if somebody else needs it, no, you need it. The plank must come out first before anything else comes out from anyone else. We are keeping our families back. We've got to get the deliverance so that that anointing, that break anointing that increases, you can't help, but it, it has to spread. And change will come. Neighborhoods will begin to change when the children of God possess their possessions. When the children of God aren't just religious people, but people who walk in power and authority, neighborhoods will change. And you say, well, I'm not so concerned about my neighborhood. Well, you need to be because you're living there. And if you are not affecting them, they are affecting you. If the light of Christ in you and the power and authority in you is not mashing up strongholds around you, they affecting you. There's no in between. So you have to want to marry holiness and deliverance. Without deliverance, there's no holiness. And whatever the devil sent, God will use the devil. By the time God is finished with you, you will be closer to the Lord and the devil will be bowing down to that name that is above every other name. What the enemy meant for bad, God will turn for good. Do not be so much in a hurry to just want your prayer answered. You need to be in a hurry to get the deliverance that will cause you to want him, want the Lord so bad the holiness will become, will, will, will come forth because it's a work of the spirit. You know, it's so interesting. I got a message from my husband earlier, Reverend Chris. And this was a first, but I thought, wow. I wonder how many of us, when I explain it to you, would think that we would do whatever it takes to get the help that we need. He messaged me, say, somebody on a ship with toothache, and they're flying them in on the helicopter to come and get help. I say, they want to land on top of the church? We could pray for them before because there's an there's a, there's a area up, upstairs that it's like, we could pray for them before they come to you. But, you know, no, they're going to the heliport, and I'm like, I'm sympathetic. I am. But there's a first. I understand life threatening. And I understand to take a rel like giving birth. But I've never heard 
of the helicopter flying in someone. And I'm thinking, my God, this is going on for a tooth. Praise God. Bless God, the person getting help. The things we're not even seeing inside of us. I wonder if we would take a helicopter to get the help. You understand? And I know there are some of you is like you took a helicopter. Because there's some of you here from Point Fortin, Cedrus, Sangue Grande, Valencia, Lopino. And that by itself says something because more than likely, maybe one out of the bunch, maybe, has a car. They, they, they got to get a taxi to come. Because desperation, like the helicopter, desperation. And I'm saying to you, don't lose that desperation. Ask God to increase it. And the reason is this. This is the key. For the race of life that we must run, we cannot turn a blind eye to deliverance from bondage because that is what is keeping many of us back. It's not necessarily somebody sends something. It could be. Between the generational iniquity and the stuff that has become like calculus on a tooth that you can't move. When calculus hardens, you can't brush it away. It literally becomes like part of the tooth because it's so hard. The things that are keeping us back, ask God to keep us desperate because those are the things that he's going to be remove so that we can not walk in what we think is authority. The anointing on you will begin to affect where you live. Will begin to affect the workplace. When they hear you are coming, they will scamper like they did with the Israelites when they heard they were coming. We read. And there were not no big numbers. They started to be fearful. The foreign gods started to be fearful. You listen to this and you say, well, that was them. Saints, it's, it's for now. It's for now. I appeal to those who desire not because we weren't born at the time that he walked on the earth are we to be deprived of that power. He may have walked 2,000 years ago. But the word says, I have the same inheritance. I don't want any longer the devil to steal it. It's not about what the devil is doing. It's about how. God is going to set you free and there shall be holiness and restoration and change. I want us to know that many, many, many of us that were raised in church have suffered terrible casualties throughout the years. You could rely on faith. You could rely on positive confessions. You will be consumed by the devil with not even a piece of yourself left if that's all you're relying on. Faith and positive confessions. Because while there's life and power as you speak, what's there that's not of God will be taken away from that authority 
that God gives us, the more we obey, the more authority. But there, there, there's, there's stuff in our mind, our will, our emotions, our body that is not of God. So I can have faith to move mountains and I can speak all that I desire to speak from the word and I will be like a, like, like, like what the word says, a clanging symbol because there will be no power in me. Deliverance and holiness. Holiness comes out of deliverance. We will be able to possess our possessions. It is not just a come to church. Somebody is going to pray for me. Demons are going to cast out and I'm going to go back. God is saying there's been so much going back. It's like dogs that vomit. Free to eat the vomit again. So more demons come. But a shift is occurring. And you could be preaching the streets and in a bus preaching. And you could get a deadly attack that will prevent you from fulfilling your destiny and want to know how you got it. Because there must be nothing in me that the enemy can use. And that's not impossible. Because all things are possible with God, but he will know what there is. And you will know this area needs attention. That area needs attention. But you could preach the gospel and still not fulfill your destiny because what is in you is given legal rights to the enemy to attack and demolish you. So we got to understand that we got to repent. We've been teaching on repentance. We got to renounce. We got to reject those things. We got to understand the generational stuff. And we got to make sure that what's going on in our everyday life and the things that are coming up against us, everything we want to do, we want to pray and we don't feel to pray. We come to service, we don't feel anything. That's bondage. It's going to go. You got to submit to God. Resist the enemy. He will flee. Submit to God. Be in the word. Get the audio in. If you can't read it, let it get into your ear. Get up and shake up. Do sit down. Watching whatever you watch. I don't know. TV, whatever. It's time to rise up. It's time to stand up. It's time to say enough is enough. What power and authority? What? Because we pray? Because somebody knows we pray? Okay, pray. Pray. But when you pray, you're not just praying. You're like in Jesus' mighty name. Nothing coming back for that person. And furthermore, I declare all the family getting saved. And in Jesus' mighty name, I release the fire of God in that house. In Jesus' mighty name. God, you will raise up this family in Jesus' mighty name. And then you begin to see people desiring him. You begin to see people saying like, I don't know, but like I want more. This is how God calls us to be. Not just we could pray. Somebody knows we could pray. But when you pray, they know power has gone forth and it's not power from you. It's come from the Lord Jesus Christ because the bondage that will block it has gone or is going the biggest thing that's crippling the church today is that the church believes it doesn't need deliverance. How do we feel that there are demons in our mind and in our soul? And we read about these things and we say, wow, that was awful. They dare. They have to come out. They have to come out. You're not losing sleep except to pray more. Not for fear. But because they have to go. Why are they not going? Why if you pray they're not going? Why when the children of darkness scenting. It landing. That power could never be anything like the power that comes from the true and living God. That's to tell you the bondage that we have to come out of. Because when they send this stuff and it land. We supposed to be able to pray. Where it can come. And if it happened to come knocking, you mash down that door. And you say, you know what? I don't even need a door. Go in Jesus' name and don't come back. 
I'm saying the level of suffering that is going on in the body of Christ is equivalent to the level of bondage where we are not possessing our possessions. Do not lose hope. Because if you think, gosh boy, them people, they're real powerful, you know. They just go and do something in the water and all things. Listen to me. They are created beings that they are using. Nothing like the true and living God. It is because we have not possessed our possessions. It is because we have not sought God to deal with us. If you are dealing with somebody else more than yourself, you got to stop. There are some things there. Pride prevents us from asking, is there anything? Is there something, is a blind spot I have? That's why I got to be discipled. The days of Christianity being just, you come, receive, go, nobody know anything about you. You don't want to talk about anything. You're, you're worshiping some pagan God. That's not the word in the Bible. That's not the way God said disciple. Disciple all men. Teach them everything I've taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So many Christians now not enough are now recognizing that something is wrong and deliverance is the key that unlocks the door of you fulfilling your destiny. Begin to ask the Lord, what is it in me? You, you will, listen, we cannot, some, may, some of us may not be on the narrow road. Since it can't just be what's wrong with other people, it has to come back to us, not in condemnation, but in, I want more. I want more. I want more. God, I want to walk in that power and authority, not for any other reason except I want the name of God to be glorified. I want the name of Jesus that they will know like with the Israelites when they crossed the Jordan and they went on to the other side. When the ites of, and them, they had to face, they knew this bunch of people is trouble now. Don't mess with them. That's not the reputation we have today. But God is raising up a remnant. Are you part of the remnant? Is this something that you want? There are slumbering spirits that have gone past just slumbering at certain times all the time. Driving in church when we're supposed to pray. Slumbering spirits. They have begun to Move even deeper. I'm getting all kinds of messages from people. And this is why God will cause a, call a fast. He'll call a fast because when you begin to kill the flesh, the spirit man begins to become more alert. What's going on here? How is it a car pray for two hours? How is it a car read the word? How is it I could watch television for 10 hours, but I can't come and tarry for nine? I'm giving you examples. It's not condemnation. It's God. You said you sent your son to shed his blood for me. Okay. What's the big deal? I'm not doubting him, you know. I'm saying that's how we come across. Because if he's told me this, then that blood that washes away my sin and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me, then I am, I, then Lord, then it means that what you're saying is I'm walking in that authority of Christ. If it's not happening, it's not that it's not true, but it could seem so to others. What it means is there's things in me that need to go. And I'm not backing down until it happens. This is, this is the slumber of the church. And God is 
causing those who hear others say, what's the big deal? Because that's what they say. What's the big deal? What, what are you all offering? Okay, we need prayer. Pray for us. Okay, so something happened when you prayed. But if I go to the Obia man, it might happen too. They have a power. I mean, let's get real. Some of us don't want to say that. We're not believing it to go and follow it, but I'm telling you. You're praying for a car. They have those that go to the, to the, to the, to the, to the Obia people and they get a car. The attitude is, it can't be one that it's about what we want. Because that was the same thing that went on with Moses and, and Pharaoh's magicians. Moses did this and they did that. And Moses did this and they did that. There's power. What you want is not the power to produce what you're asking. You want the power so that he will use you to change the world, to change your family, to change the nation. I suppose you could ask for a house, but that's, and there's nothing wrong, God, please. I want to sell my house so that, or, you know, that's religion. That's the puppet God. That you call on when you want something. It goes deeper. He's called us to occupy. And the power of God must come forth. And the devil has to think twice if he's going to try something. And what's happening now? The tables have turned for the time being. In this nation. Where everybody behind every other house is dabbling in the occult. And the Christians running scared. If they see something in their dustbin, fear start to build up. When the reality of it is they should be afraid to put something in your dustbin. They should be afraid to even call your name on an altar. Because your walk is such that it will backfire on them. Now you're going to be taking care of generational iniquity. Because that's a big open door. But the reason is not the children of darkness that we need to be so concerned about. It's because our, the light of Christ is under a, a, a bushel, it's under a, a cover. And it has to be uncovered. That's really what this is about. Not them. They're always going to be there. And there are souls that are being manipulated by the devil and you need to pray for them to get saved. But where we need to worry is how and why. How are they able to do these things? How? Since how can they, I'm telling you, I'm not going to give you details. How can they take out families who serve in the Lord? Sister, you know what I'm talking about? Will you agree that your understanding of open doors has changed? And had you known about the open doors before, them things would have backfire. Yes, she's been coming for years. She lives in Ghana. But she knows, I'm not giving details, but she knows Not just grow up in church, serving and leading, correct? How you get hit so bad. This is what she's agreeing with. Because it's things in us that need to be dealt with, saints. They cannot destroy. A curse cannot affect a child of God, as we said earlier. But if you break a hedge... They have legal rights. So the journey has to be 
an understanding, a passion in our soul at the rate that we are going, some will say in this church and there are other churches like it. Every day we're in church. Nobody, we didn't tell everybody to come to church every day. We don't choose this Bible study and prayer meeting. Wednesdays we have group sessions. If it's not on Python, it's on Jezebel, one of those topics. Thursday, another group session, and then there's men's ministry every other week. Friday is all day tarrying, Sunday service. I'm now here in my spirit, but I'm testing. Part of tarrying, they may end up to be a service at some point, because there's some, until we do another service on the Sunday earlier, can only come earlier. But the point is, the disciples were with Jesus all the time for three years, and they still made some serious mistakes. Our understanding of church is skewed. We cannot receive from God what we need to stand in this world and be in this world and not of this world unless we are around him in his word, listening to messages about him, renouncing and rejecting things that are sent to us, repenting, being in the word and praying, getting rid of some of the things I spoke about earlier that is simply big distractions as we will not make it some of us. I would not say her life that I know about, but I tell in earlier what happened to her should have never happened. Correct? How? I know we like to think it's because we was doing all kind of wrong thing and thing. No, she didn't know. Ignorance of open doors. We're busy looking at all the darkness that's around, which is, it's there. And a demon behind every bush, which, at the rate this country is going, it might be. But the truth is, when we pass the bush, the demon's supposed to scatter. This is what I want us to understand. So what God is doing in us right now is that God is raising up a people, it don't matter how many the number is, who want to walk with that power and authority, not for pride, not to be like, you know who I am, no. It's very simply, actually, my father sent his son and shed his blood and this is actually the fruit of it. I'm possessing my possessions. I thought I had possessed them. But I really actually didn't. It was all in my head. For lack of knowledge, I was perishing for a long time. But I no longer want to live that way. I want to live the way he called us to live. This is a shift that has to occur. And I want to encourage some of you. Because I'm going to pray with you in a, in a, in a little bit. The things that are sent into your life. That are affecting you. Shall affect you no more. As you ask God to prosper your soul. It's not a matter of po 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 and I'm attacking. Listen, they should think twice before they send anything to you. And if they're sending it, soon they'll stop. But if you sit down, I'm Christian. Yes, okay, following Jesus. I read any word. I still have some things. I spoke about my phone earlier. I said it's for helping people. If it wasn't, I would have drawn it already. Because it could become a distraction to more prayer. Fasting, all these things. God is raising up his people. Where the devil cannot just come. He will try. But you will see the effects of that power. You ever wondered when you read the epistles? You read the gospels and you read how Jesus walked on the earth. You ever wondered when you read about Paul and they? They don't spend a lot of time talking about. They, they talk about suffering. Make no mistake about it. And there's suffering that God will allow. 
and they're suffering from sin. We get the impression their suffering was from persecution. Yes, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it is. But you don't read a lot about, and you know, the demons were coming behind me. And you know, this was, you don't read a lot of that, about that. It's not that those things weren't trying to affect them, you know. In the beginning, they were not walking in that power and authority. But then they began to. They walked, surrendered. Whatever it is the Lord told them, they obeyed. So when Paul passed, his shadow, Peter, his shadow, demons were cast out. Because they went through a season of, I know he lives. I'm not going to deny him. And God would have poured into them and equipped them from the experience in the upper room with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We spoke about that in the group session yesterday. And I said, you know, I don't know about other churches, but I definitely know in this church, I'm going to have to teach more on what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is and the gifts of the Spirit. Because while it's not about gifts, if you don't receive a baptism of the Holy Ghost, there is a boldness that you will never walk in. Because it was until they were baptized. I'm not talking about you have to pray in tongues. Maybe, maybe not. As the spirit allows. But there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Make no mistake. This is not the same as being filled. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, of course you are. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. That's different. But you see, you don't have to sit back and be like, well, how that didn't happen? Because we weren't taught. It don't come so without a desire for holiness. That's why God takes us through a pattern. And right now we're teaching a lot on repentance holiness because at the end of the day for those who have not yet they have those that have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire when the Lord pours it down vessels that would have been understanding of receiving from him and desiring him so that bondage would be breaking deliverance would be would be taking place. Demons would be fleeing. More of him that comes down is more of you that will be filled with him. Fire and the Holy Spirit. They were up in the upper room, afraid, but surrendered. And when they got that baptism, 3,000 souls were saved in the first day. Nothing could have hold them back. And, and sometimes, in trying to get out across, we are operating from a position of we've just been filled with the Holy Spirit. We've never desired a baptism of, of fire. But it's not to elevate it to, I want a baptism of fire. I want, listen to me, walk holy. Start to give up some of the things that are consuming. The church is on a fast. If your sandwich don't come on time. From wherever it come in, it might be somebody might be bringing it or delivering it or your lunch or whatever. And it's one minute past 12. Make a call and say, bring it at two. I'll wait. Kill the flesh. You see, we want fire. But that's where it starts. Denying yourself. Asking God to remove those things in us that have to go. So I'm here to tell you, this is why. To possess your possessions on Mount Zion. Deliverance and holiness must be married. You see, the word of the Lord says in Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is the call of the church. This is what Jesus said. This day, is, this is taking place. This was him in the synagogue. This is the church. Preach, heal, Set the captives free. Set those who are blind that they would see. 
those who are wounded, that woundedness would receive the balm of Gilead. This is what deliverance is. This is what deliverance is. When this begins to take place, holiness kicks in. Luke 4, 18, you want God to manifest this in your life. To be done to you, that he will use you, a vessel, so others would be ministered in the same way. You will open your mouth and he will fill it. The woundedness in you, the Lord will begin to heal. That woundedness that was there for years. As I sat with someone quite some time ago, The pain of molestation. I suppose we could set up 20 sessions and counsel on it. But you see with the Lord, time is short. You ask, do you understand what forgiveness is? Yes. I explain it to you, you understand, yes. Let's forgive the person who molested you. Tell the Lord how it made you feel. And as they began to recount it, talking to the Lord, it's painful. The memory of it is so traumatic that sometimes people will freeze up because it's coming back and I say, Father, you lead them. He does not break a bruised reed. So they're not going to go off their mind. Because he does not break a bruised reed. So as we say, Father, lead them. You alone know what you will allow them to remember. And you hear the person say, I'm not afraid anymore. Not healed yet. And he say, Father, as they forgive, Lord, you said they would be forgiven. Though they didn't cause it, but the effects of that whole scenario that took place was being blocked. The healing was being blocked because unforgiveness, because of what the person did to them. And as they forgave, the power of the enemy to keep them in bondage with that deep, deep, deep hurt was broken. So then, the house started to break down where the enemy was hiding, where they can't handle the pain, just the thought every single day of what took place. And you begin to speak God's word over them and command those demons to leave and ask the Lord to send the healing balm of Gilead. And you command them things that was there to go. And some people, they start throw up, throw up, throw up, throw up, throw up, throw up. And then it's like, it's gone. How? How? How does a trauma go so, just so, because of the God we serve? But you have to know, otherwise for lack of knowledge you perish. Let me counsel you about that pain and hurt. You haven't even started to deal with the unforgiveness as there because of what was done. So I'm giving you an example of possessing our possessions. You think God wants somebody to stay the rest of their life traumatized? No. But he will do it his way. That healing can't come while you hate that person. Them demons lodged in there that came in and came in and hiding in the hurt have to be told to go. But they have legal rights if the unforgiveness is there. So you could fight up all you want and say, oh, this happened, come out. The unforgiveness is there. Those are legal rights. They're not going nowhere. 
If you want to affect someone so that their life changes, if you want to be nation changers, if you want to be life changers, start with the person who you need to forgive. The one who is always doing something. Because there's no big, huge devil that, yeah, the, Satan has power. There's different hierarchies of demons. But he's totally disarmed when we begin to apply the word and walk in it. And I'm here to say, it is not fear of the devil. What the devil does is, brings fear. So that person would say, I, I don't want to go back there. I don't. I am not sending you back there. Holy Spirit, you lead the person. And the Lord will begin to move in that person's life. But basic things like forgive. Whatever they did to you, forgive. If you don't understand forgiveness, come and get help to understand. Sometimes we may not see the person again, but sometimes we might. Kill them with love. There is no power greater than the power of the Holy Ghost. So when you're operating, how would Jesus respond? What would he do? When people did everything to him, what did he do? You're, we are called to respond that way in every situation in our life. And we can but we need deliverance from the things that's keeping us back because that is how God is going to use the church. Not in a, a retaliating, you know, you, you did this to me, so, 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 no, no. And what has happened is the church has started using carnal ways to get spiritual results. It can't work. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So I want us to know, because I'm going to pray with you to break some curses that were put over you. I want you to know you will not understand everything about deliverance. There are some things you just have to accept until God gives you understanding. But what happens is, there are things in us that have to go, and, and forgiveness is one. It doesn't matter. I told you all the incident over the phone. The person was cursing and carrying on. I just wanted to get a word in to bless them. Because I knew once I spoke blessing over them. I'm not blessing what they're saying. I spoke life. They were trying to kill me through their words. I just rejected. Okay. I'm not accepting it. I reject it. But I speak life over you. The devil couldn't handle that because, listen, they would have started to get deliverance one time on the phone. That was not my purpose, but I'm trying to tell you. We don't, we don't run, though there are some situations we have to run from. You have to know what did God say. It starts with us. And what should be happening is the power and authority we walk in should be such that the conversations with God should be more like I want to stand my ground and I want to pray this person into the kingdom. Lord, is this what you're asking me to? And not how they're affecting us. Like, for example, the church up the road. I'm nothing against the church, but I know that the teaching in the church is not biblical when they start to pray for those, all those saints. They are releasing Orisha gods into the atmosphere. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not against the people. What do we do? Listen, the carnal way would have been, because when we start a park on the Sunday, there's no half space for them. So we literally make sure our security guard stops us from parking past a certain point to leave space for them. The carnal way would have been, they need to shut down. They're praying to pagan gods. That's not my role. Listen, I could leave the whole street for them. When God is good and ready, if that's what God is going to do, he don't need me whether to have parking or no parking. I pray 
for the people. Leave the parking for them. But I'm praying against any pagan gods that are being sent out. They don't know what they're doing, so I'm not praying against them. You never pray against people. Though the children of darkness pray against people. We pray against the spirit operating. So what is that? You're loving back your enemy. Who didn't call who to call who to shut this church down? Calls went out. They're probably still going out. Who ran them? Why they here? See if we could find something with the corporation to come against them. And we are giving them space. And as our young adults become even more, more, um, the word is militant, but it's more lovingly militant. Just like we used to do on the other street. After the carnival bands and the following day, they go and scrub the people's walls and clean up. We have to go out there and help the, help the people in this, in this street. Regardless of whether they like us or not. The power of Satan is disarmed as you obey God. And as you don't have something there that has legal rights to attract the devil. The devil cannot destroy you. But we may need to go through a season of us getting deliverance. The word of God says, Psalm 144 verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Psalm 1834. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Warfare is going to be inevitable. But you've got to war smart. You've got to be warring and holy. You want to war and, 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 and send things back or deal with things and you are not walking holy. All you are doing is, is a boomerang. You wanted to ask me something? Okay. It's a boomerang. At the end of the day, you are not fighting people with spiritual weapons. You are fighting demons with spiritual weapons. Your enemy is not a human. Your enemy is, the sat is Satan operating in the human. He knows if you're walking holy. He knows. If you're sold out to the Lord, he knows. He knows the level of protection that's around you. That he may try, but he can't get through. So to win, we have to fight. To experience dominion over the enemy, we have to fight. There must be serious efforts and warfare. But the first stage in the battle is deliverance and holiness. Through being discipled, through receiving deliverance, we begin to change from the inside and we become holy as he's holy. That's the strength and power we walk in as we learn to use different weapons. Some of us want to use the cannonball and the shotgun and we haven't even taken out the weapon of holiness. Gotta walk, you gotta be smart because you're gonna get hit. The enemy cannot come up against the children of God who are in one accord. Families must come together in one accord. If there are things that are not being dealt with in the family, those are the doors that are open to the enemy. And you've got to be able to say, these things have to go. Start making a list, not just of yourself. What is in the family that needs to go? Father, cover your servant as she leaves in Jesus' mighty name and shield her. So I want to pray for you right now because there are those things that we don't know about and we're like, God, I just want to possess my possessions because you say I must occupy until you come, but I got to occupy 
with the weapons in my hand. Father, make me holy as you are holy. Send your fire upon me to burn away those things that are not of you. God, I stand my ground. Not one of my household is going to be lost in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, release, Father, more of your fire in this place and the blood of Jesus. God, I pray for those who are here. And I declare, Father, oh God, arise and damage any ignorance about deliverance, that wall, mash it down, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Any powers that want anyone here to miss out on blessings and benefits because of deliverance. I command those powers to the pit right now in Jesus' mighty name. Saints, I want you to receive right now. I want you to receive. I'm not praying for you to just be. You need to say, Lord, Lord, let something break in me today. Lord Jesus. He is here. Yokes have to break. In Jesus name. By the power and the blood of Jesus. On your behalf I close the doorway that is open to bondage and enslavement in your life. In Jesus mighty name. I fire back on your behalf every arrow fired into your life. And through the dreams in Jesus mighty name. I command those spirits begin to leave now. Go to the dry places, leave through the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth right now. In Jesus' mighty name. I mash down those walls right now. Any form of ignorance in our life, lack of understanding about deliverance for ourselves. God, remove the blinkers in Jesus' mighty name. By the power and the blood of Jesus, I close that doorway that's open to the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I declare that they shall laugh over their enemies in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, come upon them. Overshadow their life in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant them grace to wait upon you, to wait upon you. Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall mount upon wings like eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare... Their destiny will not be aborted. Their life will not be cut short in Jesus' mighty name. I command those spirits to come out now and go to the pit in Jesus' mighty name. The sun shall not smite them by day, nor the moon by night. Father, whoever's been using the sun and the moon against them, in Jesus' mighty name, I command those spirits to leave. There are some cyclical things. There are some things like almost like a puppet being sent every so often. The sun and the moon that has been manipulated against you. In Jesus mighty name. Father right now in Jesus mighty name. I cancel that networking in Jesus mighty name. Every power troubling your life and destiny. I command those powers. Be buried alive in hell right now. Go to the pit. Go to the dry places. In Jesus mighty name. Blood of Jesus kill every power. Troubling their life from the waters. From the marine kingdom. From the waters. Powers troubling their life. God where there's been divination in churches there have been before. God, where there's been counterfeit laying of hands. God, where there's been masonry, Freemasonry, the lodge in Jesus' mighty name. I destroy the plan of the enemy to destroy you in Jesus' mighty name. I paralyze the activities of the host of darkness in your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. 
I paralyze, I frustrate the tokens of all evil powers that are against your prosperity of soul and your prosperity in Jesus' mighty name. I command every arrow, come out of the heart right now. Come out of the heart right now. Every sword, come out of the heart right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I command every arrow, come out. Come out of that heart. Come out of that heart. Immerse that heart in the blood of Jesus. Right now, I command in Jesus' mighty name. Everything lodged that came through the dreams. Every word spoken against you. Every altar erected against you. Father, wherever divination has been used against them in Jesus mighty name I command those things to leave in Jesus mighty name father I repent for their sin I repent oh God the things that they have not yet repented for God I'm asking for your mercy right now in Jesus name God I repent on their behalf and in Jesus mighty name God I mash down every plan of the enemy to destroy them in Jesus mighty name and I command those spirits to come out I command those spirits of slumber spirits of slumber begin to leave spirits of slumber begin to leave begin to leave and go to the pit every spirit of slumber in Jesus mighty name God release your fire in this place release your fire in this place and the blood of Jesus in Jesus mighty name father increase their strength and ability for war in Jesus mighty name baptize them oh God in the mighty name of Jesus that you increase their strength and ability for war in Jesus mighty name Deliverance fire of God explode in their foundation now. Deliverance fire of God explode in their foundation. Explode in their mind. Explode in their souls right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Explode in Jesus mighty name. Father I come against the blind warlocks and witches that seek to try to hinder. Father, save them or judge them in Jesus' mighty name. I destroy their networking right now in Jesus' mighty name. Ancestral covenants waging war against your destiny break by fire. In the name of Jesus, ancestral covenants Break right now. Break right now. Try not to cross your hands or your feet. In Jesus mighty name. Ancestral covenants right now. Break in Jesus name. Break a command those spirits to begin to leave right now. Go to the dry places now. In Jesus mighty name. Come out. Come out of your hiding place. Come out from deep, 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 deep down. The light of Christ is exposing you right now. The blood of Jesus is purging you out right now. Come out in Jesus mighty name. Rituals and sacrifices affecting the promises of God for your life. I set you ablaze with the fire of God right now, burn to ashes in Jesus' mighty name. All rituals and sacrifices being done against you, affecting the promises of God for your life. The consuming fire of God sets you ablaze right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I come against the spirit of premature death. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree and I declare on your behalf any known or unknown curses operating in the dark against your destiny. Break in the name of Jesus right now. Known and unknown curses. Known and unknown curses. You have to respond. Bow to the name of Jesus right now. Come out by fire. Any strong man enforcing curses against your life. That strong man has to die now. In Jesus mighty name. Any strong man enforcing curses against your life. In Jesus mighty name. Strong man you have to die. One who is stronger, his name is Jesus, has come to replace you today. Bow to Jesus. Bow to Jesus. Every preconception curse opp opp oppressing your destiny, break in the name of Jesus. Break. 
right now in Jesus mighty name every preconception curse and every curse that came with conception in the womb in Jesus mighty name I command you begin to leave right now and go to the dry places right now in the mighty name of, of Jesus curses emanating from any self-imposed parental curses against your destiny break and backfire in the mighty name of Jesus parental curses break up in Jesus mighty name word curses from parents word curses from grandparents I break those curses right now in Jesus mighty name and if this has happened to more than one person so I'm saying it in here more than one person in attending a funeral That is not of God. If there's anything that has affected you, I command those spirits begin to leave now. Begin to go to the dry places. Go now. One way to the pit. Some of us need to let the dead bury the dead. Come out in Jesus' name. Wherever we attended, wherever we went, The Lord says next time respect him. I command those spirits that have attached themselves because of the environment that we went into. I command those spirits to leave and go now to the dry places. One way to the pit right now. In Jesus mighty name. Father, every curse monitor hidden in your foundation be uprooted and break in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare every hidden family curse that you have inherited must break now in Jesus mighty name must break now in Jesus mighty name I command those spirits begin to leave begin to leave and go to the dry places right now in Jesus mighty name Childhood curses that you inherited. On the day that you were named, your name was given to you. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. I break those curses right now. In Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that curses working against you, your head, To cause you to have bad luck. You don't have bad luck as a child of God. Those are curses. I command those spirits to leave and go right now. Come out of the head. In Jesus mighty name. Come out of the head. In Jesus mighty name. Any demonic observance. On your behalf. When you were born all the way to now. Be nullified in the name of Jesus. Family rituals that have brought curses upon your destiny. Be broken now in Jesus' mighty name. Family rituals that you took part in. That has brought curses upon your destiny. Be nullified now. I reverse it in Jesus' mighty name. I cancel in Jesus' mighty name. I command those spirits. Leave and go to the dry places right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Leave and go to the dry places right now. Any unknown curses coming from broken relationships of the past, break now in Jesus' name. Break now in Jesus' name. I command those spirits to leave. I sever the soul tie and I command those spirits to leave and go to the pit. In Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that curses of dizziness, barrenness, emptiness working in your life break and backfire now in Jesus' mighty name. I command all sicknesses and infirmity that have come because of curses spoken on you, because of divination, I command those spirits to leave. 
Leave through the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth right now. I declare deliverance and healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out and go to the pit right now. Father, increase, increase the blood of Jesus. Increase the break anointing. Increase, oh God. Break those yokes in Jesus' mighty name. I break the power of the wickedness over your life. Because of unknown curses in Jesus' mighty name. I break the power of wickedness over your life. And as you choose to forgive those who have hurt you, that power is nullified right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. 